I'm going to do two inserts here update and a delete so for clarity let me uh, create the documents first doc insert one is equal to new document which is going to take username insert one and I'm going to append the password PWD insert one similarly for insert two also I'll be doing the same insert two insert two and the password is going to be insert. now for our update we just need to set the value for the update this is for doc update the original document it's going to have the username let me get the username from here The username is going to be admin2 the updated one I mean the new one is going to have a username admin to modify and the command execution for setting this is going to be different here update command new document we have to provide the set operator here and then the document name you might have already known about this a set operator now we did an update just to recall what I have did I have created an original document this will match the query and the new document which is going to replace this but do remember that we need to use a set or it is going to just change the structure of the document with a new one so I have used a set operator it has to go in the form of document so one more document I have created here and then provided the new one to this And finally uh, delete delete is going to be very easy I'm going to delete this one that is with admin 3 document delete I'm going to delete this admin 3 so we got two inserts a single update and a delete in a bulk write now it's time to create a list array dot dot us list this is the one we are going to use the complex part is going to be here new insert one model and the document the document is doc insert The next one it's going to be doc insert two Oops. we are going to send this list as a bulk write third one is little complex because we'll be using the update one model 
update one model the filter and the update the filter is the original document the update is going to be the update command that will have the new document with the set command now we have done two inserts I mean we have prepared the list for two inserts and one update new delete one model and this is going to be doctor so let us see it again we have created a list with uh, two insert models one update model and one delete model for update model this is the filter query that's the original document which admin 2 I'm going to replace that with admin 2 mode without changing the structure so I have used set now to the key method that is a collection dot bulk write and this is the list we are going to write list of data let us check the collection status before and after this is the status before bulk write The status after bulk write it's going to be different so we got two inserts one update and one delete admin 3 has gone which we have deleted using delete model delete one model this shows how bulk write happens so let me walk through this again for bulk write we need to create a list of models for that we have prepared the documents initially for update we have a original document which will be acting as filter the second one is a command with the set operator which is going to replace the original one with the new document the third one is for deleting for that we have used delete one model we created a list and then we have paused the list as a parameter to the bulk write method in collection class so this has changed our existing data in the collection successfully so this is how bulk write works with this we have seen all the demonstration topics we have listed the databases we have looped through a collection to display its documents we created a new collection we did insert single insert many and similarly delete and delete many we dropped a collection we dropped databases we used find and we have used classes under the model package filters sorts and projections we did update we have seen about run command we have seen how to upload a document using gridfs finally we have seen about a bulk write with this we have seen the demonstration of using mongo java driver with mongodb c shop with mongodb this is a fairly easy process the api is very clear and concise these are the key steps involved the first step is to install the package that is the mongodb driver using the nougat in visual studio the second step is to use the mango client class this is used for connection the third step is to use one of these classes models collection based on document filters to do the CRUD operation 
as you know there are two ways to install uh, nuget packages either you can take command line options or you can do visually using the context menu for our demonstration we'll be seeing this we'll be listing databases listing collection contents we'll be creating new collections we'll be inserting we'll be finding we'll be updating deleting we'll be limiting sorting filters and we'll be doing the projections and finally the important ones bulk write run command and grid of us the link mentioned here that is the github link has complete details about the c sharp driver let us visit that first search for mongodb c sharp github this is the link this page has all the releases references and apis for the c sharp driver google for mongodb c sharp github click on the search result click here further this page has details about the various releases of this c sharp driver details about the packages involved on clicking reference it has a great tutorial about how to get started installation steps are given here under quick tour section you can see details about the common operations and the crud operations for instance details about making a connection getting a database getting a collection inserting a document finding a document all those details are available here under admin quick to section details about the admin operations are available such as how to create a database how to drop a database how to create a collection drop a collection all those details are available under admin quick to in our demonstration list we are going to start with the first three that is list databases list collection contents create a new collection this three we are going to see now under visual studio right click here to install the necessary driver click manage new get packages search for mongodb it lists you two drivers mongodb driver and the old one click on this click download so there will be three packages installed let us cross verify here mongodb driver mongo driver core and mongodb json all three are same clicking ok you must see the drivers in our references you can see here in the references mongodb bison is available mongodb driver is available and mongodb core is available this is the easiest way to install a nuget package or you can take the command line option as mentioned in the slide we are going to see our first set of a demonstration that is to list databases list collection contents and then to create a new collection i'll be using a separate class for this the key packages needs to be imported first that's mongodb dot driver and we're using mongodb dot bison
first step is to create a Mongo client which is going to connect to the local host next step is to list the databases client dot list databases that to array list sorry to list now we have the list of databases the next step is easy we just need to loop through this one to get the available databases in the local host program I'll be calling this one that is demo set one dot main on running this we must see the list of available databases these are the databases available db demo 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 php db local uh, test c sharp let me refresh this one So we have done our first sample. So list databases is over. The second one in our list is to list the collection contents. That's very easy. Client dot get database I'm going to use this one demo PHP DB under this I have a products collection get collection name is products yes so here it's needs to be a bizon document type Let us convert this zone into a document list. That's easy. Doc list equal to collection dot find new. Oops. This on document. Doc list. Let me run the code now. We got the complete collection contents over here. What we have done is using client, we got the database and we got the collection. 
of type a BSON document. Then on that collection, we have done an empty search that's using find method. We converted the result to a list and we looped through the list to get our collection contents. Let me cross verify this one. So GoPro, GoPro. So the results are similar, nine objects we got. Let me cross check the result. We got nine documents here. And here too we got nine documents. We have successfully finished our second assignment that is to list collection contents. The third step is to create a new collection. Let me create a database as well as a collection. That's very, very easy. So this is what we did is for showing collection contents. The next one is for creating new DB and a new collection. Let me copy the same code. It's Client dot get database. The database name is going to be G Shop G Shop Demo DB dot create collection. Please note that this database doesn't exist. So when you use get database for a database which is not existing, it's going to create a new one. The collection name is going to be products so we have done let me run the code now we must see a new database and a collection created clicking refresh c sharp demo db is created c sharp demo db under that we must see a collection by name products yes we got so this is how we can create a new database as well as a new collection. We have successfully seen the top three in our demonstration list. Next we are going to do a insert single and insert mini. To demonstrate uh, insert I'll be using a separate class. So let me create that here. Insert demo. I'll take uh, some code part from our existing example. I'll be using some existing code portions. Mongo client, then the connection to the database and the collection. In our case, do remember that we created a database by name C Shop Demo DB. I'll be connecting to that, then to the products collection under that. The next step is to insert one for that we need to create a bson document first dot add the fields Category string value value is going to be electronics then 
then again I'm going to add few more fields key value pairs the name of the product it's going to be the uh, Amazon Echo Speaker price it's going to be around $180 now we have created a Bizon document the next step is to call insert one function in the collection insert one and then the document name now let me call this main function in our main program On running this, we must see a new record inserted. Refresh. Yes, we got one record. Let's see the records. We have three fields now, category, name and price. A single insert has been done. That's what it's called as insert one. The next step is to do multiple inserts. For that we need multiple documents in a list form and then we'll be calling the insert many like this insert many okay one that's two that's three categories electronics price is going to be $32 or $33 it's come on 37 the next one is Connecticut price is around $90 and finally it's Kitchen timer, price simple, price is around ten dollars. Let me add all this to a list. The list of docs is going to be new. The list of on documents list of docs dot add doc one doc two doc three just need to change the same here doc one doc one this is doc two it's doc two Doc three followed by doc three. It's going to be list docs. This will do multiple inserts for a single method call. Let me run this one. We must see multiple records now. Yes, we got all the records. What we have done as a batch operation in insert many. So this is how insert one and insert many works. The next in our list is find and find with query. We'll be knowing more about find with query when we are going to use that with limit sort filters and projections. So now let us see a simple demo using find and find with query. First up, I'm going to create a separate class for find I'll be using the code portions from the previous examples
we are going to search in this uh, database and in this collection now in this collection I'm going to do a find query it's going to take an argument of a uh, document that's based on document Initially, I'm going to give an empty document so that I'll be getting all the records there. To list is the simplest way or you can use cursor also. I'll go with list currently. formatting oops I haven't called this in the program now we got all the documents in that collection now let me introduce a condition so that it's going to filter based on price let me give the value as 90 price 90 on running this we must find items with only price 90 is listed this is how find with query works we'll be seeing more about this while well, we are going to see about limit sort filters and projections using builders so our next topic is going to be on this four let us start with limiting first It's very easy you just need to call the limit method here and the number of rows I mean the number of documents need to be displayed in my case I'll be getting three oops prior to that I want to take out this condition So we got a uh, three listed here. So this is how limit works. The next step is to have sorting. For sorting, we'll be using builders. That's very easy. So builder equal to builders. It's going to be here. B zone document dot sort. That's it. Variable sorting is equal to on this builder we are going to call the ascending method or the descending method we have ascending I want to list the prices in ascending order I will take the column the field name here as price so this must give us the result in ascending order so we must pause this sorting call the sort and then pause this that's it so we must get the top three least praised products so this is the result this is how it is in the DB so 10 is there 10 is there and 33 is there and more 33 is there but we have limited the results by 3 so we got it Sorting works fine. The next step is to have projection because as you can see currently we 
get the ID field. I want to filter this ID field and the category field. I just want only the name and the price. It's a different builder. So builder projection is builders. Oops, builders bizon document type dot projection. That's done. Now the next step is to do a Projection configuration is going to be builder underscore project dot. We got include and exclude. I'll be including the price and the name. I'll be excluding the ID column. So we got a new projection. Let me take out this sorting now. Want to do a projection. So we got project method. I'll be pausing. Projection config. On running this, you must see only the required columns get displayed here. So name column we got and the price column. We have excluded the category and the ID column. So this is how sort projection and limit works. Now let us move to the next one. In our demonstration list, we have seen about limit, sort and projections. Now let me show about filters. Filters is very easy, are similar to projection and sort. Let me copy this line. Filter and here it's going to be filter. Filter query is equal to You can see different uh, methods are listed here greater than less than less than equal to all those things and for this demo I'm going to use a greater than you just need to give the field name first field name is price and I want to get products with a price greater than 50 so instead of project it's going to be filter and this filter query So our find method will use this build filter to filter the documents which have price greater than 50. I'm running this. We got three products which have price greater than 50. Let us cross check that. One, two and three. Yes, that's right. So this is how filter works. The only difference is filter needs to be given in the find method whereas for project and sort we have a separate methods. Now next topic is update one, update many, delete one, delete many, drop collection and drop database. These are very easy. Let us do that. Let me create a separate class for that.
let me copy some code portions from the insert demo So basic setup is ready. We are getting the collection using the Mongo client and the collection name is products. Now the demo is update one. So let me create a separate class for this. Update delete a demo. and I'll take some code portions to speed up. So we got the collection now. Now we are going to see about update one. It's very easy. You just need to create a filter and then you need to set the value. So create a filter and set a value. That's it. So you know about creating a filter. We have seen about builders. Builders Bizon document. So I'll be uh, changing the value of this 33 to 40. So that I'm going to do here. The filter is going to be on price, come on, 33. So to update it. It's very easy. Builder underscore update. It's the same. Update will be called here and the set method. Prices for P. Now it's simple, we just need to call the respective method, that's it. So on this collection, dot update one, it takes two parameters, the first one is filter, and the second one is the update statement. I'm going to change this. run it so I need to see the changes here yes as you can see the 33 got updated into 40 in one document not in multiple documents so in case if you're going to use update many it is going to update multiple documents for instance I have two documents with a price 90 I'm going to change that as 95 The difference is here I'm going to use update many. So we must see multiple documents must get updated now. One, two we got. So we got both the documents updated. So this is how update many works. It's very simple. Just remember to call the filter and then the update set. 
now to the delete delete it's going to be the same only the thing is it takes a single argument instead of two so i'm going to delete one where the price is 10 same filter but this one is for delete price is 10 next up is collection dot delete one the condition let me comment this portion we have two documents after this we must see only one document done yes one is gone oops yeah right it's right because it hasn't deleted uh, two documents because I mistaken that it has deleted two documents because I have given here only delete one so in case if I am going to give delete many it's going to delete both the documents so let's do that also delete many prices 95 After this, we must not see the price with 95. Gone. This is how update and a delete works. We have seen about delete, delete many, update and update many. So for update, just remember that you need to call update and then set. For delete, it's very straightforward. You just need to give the filter. That's it. The next one in our list is to do a drop collection in drop database. This is very easy. Let me create a separate class for this. The API is very well organized, so things are very, very easy. Let me paste some code portions from the previous examples. To drop a collection, you just need a till the database. So you got the database, and then I do a drop collection on that db dot drop collection. Our collection name is products. cross verify it it's products with four records on running this we must see the collection vanished here it is drop demo refresh here collection is gone now to the drop database that's very easy we just need till client only the layer above the database so drop database that's it let me take out this running this we must see the database dropped so database is gone this is how drop collection and drop database works
for a drop collection you just need to call the drop collection method in the database whereas for dropping a database you must call the drop database in the client the next one in our list is bulk write run command and grid of us let us start with bulk write it's very interesting so in class to do that bulk Right, a demo. Let me copy the code base from here. If you see the API for the bulk write method, it takes write model as an parameter. So let's create an array of write models. And for a write model, this is the API of that. And you can see the inheritance hierarchy. There are many models under this. So if you take insert one model, we can add a insert one model to a write model array and then we can feed that to the collection dot bulk write method so the first step is to create insert models then we will create update models then finally we will create delete models So this document is good for insert model. Let me take down this here. So this is doc1 and this is doc2. This is going to be some dash prices to this. Where insert model one is equal to no insert one model the document is bizon document it's going to be document let me create the second one this is model 2 it's going to be doc2 so we created two insert models and one update model I'll be using the same update action this is going to take the doc update here and the set Now let us create a update model. It's going to take the filter parameter. Come on, this update action. Oops. done so we have created a update model let me add one more product here so that deletion can be done easily Top three it's going to be cashew wave scepter prices 
Poftíme. Dobrz. To je stock 3 here. Insert model is 3. So for delete model, I'll be using the same to delete it. So bizon doc3 filter for delete prices 59, which will be matching the Casio web subtotal. And where delete one model is equal to new, delete one model, bizon document. And the document name is doc3 underscore filter delete. So we got uh, all the models now totally one, two, three, four, and five models. The next step is to add that to an array. That's very easy where write models is equal to new write model it's going to be of bizon document it's an array here we'll be giving all the models insert one insert two insert three model one insert model two insert model three update model delete one more the next step is to call the collection dot bulk right right bulk right and we need to pause this as an parameter here so let me recollect what I have, what I have done till now we created a three bizon documents for insert models so all three are linked here then we created an update model update model was a little bit complex because we need uh, three documents for that one for filtering one for having the update value and the third one having the set so that's done and again we used filter delete create a delete model so this is b write demo so let me run this one now so you must see the new collection created database created yes we got view documents perfect so we did uh, three inserts so out of which one is deleted because we have given in delete one model to delete the wave septal that is cashew wave setup this might have got deleted this is deleted because of this price 59 we are deleting and we got an update the price was 2, we are updating by 1, so we got an update successful. Similarly, the inserts are also successful. This is how bulk write works. Let me recollect what we have done. It may seem a little bit complex, but it's very, very easy. In the first step, you just need to create the necessary documents, bizon documents. Once that is done, select the model which you are going to do. For instance, you can select insert model, update one model or update many model or delete one or delete many models. Then using the documents, you have create these models. Update model is a little bit uh, challenging because you need to create three documents. The first one is for filtering. The second one is the real update and the third one will have the set operator with this update or document. So once update model is done, similarly you can 
use delete model which is very easier because you just need the filter condition so you need a single document once this is done create a write model array all the models have been inserted and just simply call the bulk write method it will write all the models whichever you have done here this is very useful when you are going to do a batch operation and you can reduce a network overload the next in our list is to do a run command this is very very easy we have seen about bulk write that is used for batch operations now we are going to see about run command this is a very simple but a very handy method for executing database commands against the database if you search for mongodb commands you'll be finding this link database commands mongodb manual under this commands page the commands are grouped under four uh, different categories we are going to use this command to see the storage utilization of our collection we are going to call the db dot run command the command has to be in command format as you can see here the syntax is in command format we can create a bizon and then we can cast to that In the command on clicking that you'll be able to see how the syntax works we'll be giving the command and the string so we'll be doing the same so this is call stats command the name of the collection in our case is products collection We're going to give here bizon o. So let me do a cast here. Command of type. Oops. Console dot right line. write it to json so what we have done is we created a bizon document with the command and the collection name then we have casted that to a command object and we have executed using the run command method on running this the details are here this storage size is important which is given over here and this is our collection name so this is our run command works you can use this for variety of purposes for database monitoring all those stuffs the next one in our list is a grid of us which is one of the interesting among all this so this helps us to save images or videos to our database let's do a sample on that for grid of us you need to install a package just google for mongodb grid of us or just grid of us so this is the one you need to install it's already there so once this is done you'll be able to see the namespace using system sorry mongodb dot driver dot grid of us 
this namespace will be available only after doing the installation now let me copy some code portions Similarly for this. One of the key classes we'll be using is GridFS bucket. So this is the AP of that class, this is the one we are going to use. So where uh, is equal to new grid of first bucket. As you can see here, the first argument is a database. So we can easily give our database name here. The second one is a grid of first bucket options. Let us do it later. Now we got the bucket. In bucket, we got two upload methods. One is upload from bytes and upload from stream. If your file size is huge, go for upload from stream. If your file size is normal and within your RAM limits, because uh, this one is going to load the entire content into your program memory. So you can go for upload from bytes. So I'll be using the first one upload from bytes. The first parameter is the file name, the file name which is going to be saved in the database and the byte source. So to get the byte source, let me use a file method, sorry, file class. So that's under system dot io dot file dot read all text. Z temp. Let me locate the file first. It's langs dot jp jpeg langs dot jpeg. Yeah. So this is going to save in a byte array. The file name in my case, I'm going to give a name like. Lines info sources this. Yeah, sorry. Read text. Read all bytes. Yes. So the issue is fixed now. What we have done is we created a gridfs bucket class. We have read the file contents and then we have used upload from bytes method, not the upload from stream method. We have used upload from bytes because it's a small file and then I'm passing the parameters. Let me run it again. Done. Let us cross verify in the database. Refresh. We got the files. Langs info is the file name we have given. View file. I'm using it for you for this. So we got the langs info.jpg file uploaded in the database using GridFS. So similarly, you can use find and download methods to download from the database so this is how grid of us works it's very very simple but very useful with this we have seen all the topics in our demonstration the important ones are bulk write run command grid of us
PHP and MongoDB. It is very easy to work with a PHP and MongoDB. The only challenge currently is that PHP has three different paths. The first one is PHP 5.x, the second one is HHVM, and the third one is the newly released PHP 7. As you all know that PHP 5.x has a wider adoption and it is live in many production systems, though it lags in performance. Mainly due to the performance reasons, the PHP community adopted to HHVM faster and there has been many migrations to HHVM. But please note that PHP 7 has performance as similar to that of HHVM in all the areas except in WordPress PHP. But I hope in next iterations they will be catching up HHVM in that also. So we have uh, three different installations to be done for three different paths. We'll be sticking with the most widely used that is PHP 5.x because as you all know that PHP 5.x is compatible with PHP 7. We'll be using PHP 5.x for a demonstration since PHP 5.x is widely used and migration to PHP 7 is very easy from PHP 5.x. There are two different types of drivers available in php.net for MongoDB. The first one is the legacy driver, the not recommended one that is Mongo driver. It's very simple to work with Mongo driver but it is not recommended. So we'll be using the latest one that is a MongoDB extension php mongodb.dll. In addition to that we'll be using a MongoDB library to make our work easier. MongoDB library is a higher level of abstraction over this MongoDB extension. So you need to install these two things in your system. For the installation, you need to use a PCL or direct download from php.net website. And for the MongoDB library, we'll be using Composer. It's very easy. We'll be seeing more about the installation process in our demonstration. We'll be doing the following steps for the PHP MongoDB demonstration. The first one is we'll be installing the MongoDB extension from php.net. Either you can use a PECL or you can directly download the DLL from php.net. In the second step, I hope you must be all having this one, either ZAMP, WAMP or MAMP in your systems. In the third step, we'll be configuring the extension in the PHP INA file so that uh, this PHP MongoDB.dll is in the extension list. In the fourth step, we'll be installing Composer and we'll be using Composer to install the MongoDB library. And in the fifth and sixth steps, we'll be locating the autoloader PHP and we will be including the path in our PHP scripts. So these are the six simple steps we are going to do for the installation and configuration. It's very, very easy. Under getting started section, Two installation steps are uh, given. The first one will be using PECL for installing. This is for the installation of MongoDB extension. For the second one, you need to use Composer. You can use PECL or you can directly download from php.net. So visit php.net, search for MongoDB. So this will take you to the extension page. As you can see database extensions, vendor specific extensions, MongoDB. Click on the installing configuring section. As mentioned earlier, you can use PECL for installing this extension or you can directly download the DLL. Click on this. There is a mistake here. That is this extension has to be PHP MongoDB.dll, not this one because this DLL refers to the legacy driver. So for extension, we'll be having php mongodb.dll. Click on this. On clicking the DLL, will be listed with thread and non-thread safe options. Click on the thread safe x86. In the zip file, you will be able to see the php mongodb.dll. This has to be kept under the extension directory and uh, this entry needs to be added to the php.ini file. In our demonstration list, the first task is to list the database. So let's do that.
the first step is to add the autoload.php of composer in my machine it is located under c user sorgo vendor sorgo is a username so let me copy this path The next step is to use the manager. For manager, it's very easy. You just need to import this one or use this package driver. So under this, we can get the manager class. Manager is used for connection. New manager. Here we have to give the server URL. We have a MongoDB instance running in port number 27017. Now manager is done. The next step is to issue a command. To check the API for this command, you can search for MongoDB driver command, php.net reference will be listed. So here you can see the examples and the syntax for command. So it's an array. Here we'll be giving the MongoDB command. To learn about MongoDB commands, just Google for MongoDB commands. Here four sets of commands are given. We are going to see about listing databases. So list databases is the command we are going to use here. That's done. The next step is to execute the command. For this, we are going to use the execute command method in the manager. Execute command. The first parameter is the database name, so that's admin database. The second parameter is a command. Let's see about the syntax of this. This is the API for execute command method, which is going to return a cursor. It's going to take two parameters, that's a string and then a command. String will have the database name. It's going to return a cursor. Let's dump this cursor to see what it has. I have copied the result to a separate file. We have to extract this one for each cursor. Uh, a result 
and again one more for each this is for result we have data basis let me cross check that yes yes db name it's going to be db name come on so let me comment this one out code formatting on running this we must see the databases names class sdd class cannot be converted to a i need to check this output here yeah this is name i missed it let me add this one now we must get the database names listed Yes, these are the four databases currently available in the local server. Let us cross check the same DB demo, demo local and PHP MongoDB. So all four are there. This is how to list the available databases. Let me recall what I have done in the first step. I have included the autoload.php. In the step two, I have used manager and command class under MongoDB driver package. Using manager, I have connected to the local host. And in the command, I have issued list databases command for the command syntax. Please do Google for MongoDB commands. It will take you to the reference of all the commands where the commands are grouped into four separate sections. Then I have called the execute method in manager to execute this command against the admin database. And then I have just looped through the cursor to get the database names. Next one in our demonstration is to list the collection contents and then to create a new collection. So we'll be doing these two together, list collection contents and then to create a new collection. Let me create a new PHP file for that. The steps are going to be same. To list the collection contents, let me take the code part from here. So we have manager now. I'm going to use the database class, which is going to be under use MongoDB. It's going to be MGMR, MNGR, come on, the database name. Let me get the database name, it's DB underscore demo. Now we have the database. The next step is to have the collection. DB the collection name is call user details I 
I'm going to do a find in this collection. Currently without any queries. So it's going to list us all the elements in that particular collection, which is in turn is going to return a cursor. We got the cursor, then for each. Dollar curse, dollar doc. What's it going to be there? Let me get the fields. That's username. I'm going to list here. So that's it. We must get the usernames. Yeah, I need to run this one. We got the username Bob. This is the only one document in this collection. If you want to change a collection, you just need to give the collection name. It's a user ID here. I just changed the collection name. To list a collection under a different database, you just need to give the database name over here. For instance, demos the database name. The collection name is dbl underscore login and the field name is user id so instead of username i'll be giving user id the results are matching let us recall the steps what we have done for listing the collection contents we use the manager class to connect to the server database class to select the database and then we have selected the particular collection in the database instance and finally we have used the find method to list all the contents of the collection so it's pretty simple let us move to the next one in our list that is to create a new collection Let me uh, do it here itself. This is for listing collection contents. I'm going to create a new database that is demo underscore php uh, db. Under this database, I'm going to create a collection create collection the collection name is going to be products let me do a vadump of this It's a simple one-step procedure where we have connected to a database which is not existing and then we have called the create collection. Now let me run this one. It's okay, it's created. Let me check in Mongo Booster. Yes, database is created and then it has a products empty collection. We have just seen how to create a new collection. We have uh, created a new database, demo PHP DB. Under that, uh, we have created a collection by name products. Now, the next step is to 
do a insert single and insert many let me create a new php file for this the first step is to have the recover let me copy this from here in the second step i'm going to use the manager so let me copy this particular code manager is same database is same we are not going to create collection we are going to just select the collection the collection name is products now we got the collection the next step is to insert in this collection prior to that let me check the data in the collection i mean the documents in the collection so we don't have any data in the products collection so let me insert few documents here let's insert one i'm going to give a array it's going to be the product name name is going to be drone parrot and price is going to be $300 we can even get the result here like this and then put a random of the result we don't need command let me delete this one let me run this we got the insert id2 here So it's successfully inserted. The next step is to do a insert mini. That's going to be very easy. Let me comment out this one. Instead of insert one, I'm going to use insert mini. The product list here the name is GoPro Hero price is 215 PHP Storm ID price is 19 I just need to add one more square braces just remember that this is the main difference for insert one we'll be having a single square brace at the beginning and end here it is array within array so we'll be having two square braces I'm running this, I'm going to see two new values. Yes, so insert many is successful. The next step is to do a find, find with query and a plain find. Let's do that. let me copy the common portions now we have the collection we just need to do a find in this collection let's 
going to return a cursor. The next step is to loop through the cursor. On running this, we must see the names. Oh, we need to run the find demo. So drone parrot, GoPro, PHP Storm ID, GoPro, and PHP Storm ID. That's because I ran insert demo twice, so the duplicate values are here. Results are same. The next step is to filter the result. That's easy. The find query, we are going to filter using the product name. It's going to be a document, so uh, array brace is required. Name. It's going to be PHP Storm ID. Let me run this one. I need price. I'm running this, it must list the price. Yeah, it's 1919. This is how we'll be filtering. The next step is to see about sorting, filtering and projections. That's very easy. So for this, I have created a test data. Here introduced a new category by name IDE in our products collection. The IDEs with their price. And similarly, I have updated the PHP Storm IDEs values. I have added a category IDE field here executed this one currently my collection looks like this it has a category called IDE with price and different IDs are listed here so we'll be using this simple uh, collection with minimal records first let me select the category run this let me list both the name and price this is the one Next step is to limit the number of records shown. That's very, very easy. You just need to call the limit here. And then let me make it as three. So we got only three results. For sorting, that's very easy just or sort here and add an another array the field name is going to be the price and the sorting order is minus one on running this we must get the top three prized ids so Zen Studio, it's 189, PHP Designer is 99, and Rapid PHP is 59. So this is how sorting and limiting works. Now let us see about uh, projections. 
projections are very easy let me use the same array like this you just need to say the projection and then the columns you need In my case, the fields I need is the name only, it has to be one. Square braces is ending here. We have added projection, it's going to throw an error. because price is filtered out. If you take this out and then execute this, it's going to give you both the columns, I mean the name and price. If you include the projection, it's going to throw an error because price is filtered out. We need, oh sorry, we need only the name column here. Let me run it again. Okay. So that's how we got undefined index price. We got the names listed as you can see here Zen Studio, PHP Designer, and Rapid PHP. So name got listed and not the field price. Let me comment out this and show you how the var dump looks. Var dump of the doc. We have only the name in the var dump. We are going to take this one out. It's going to show all the fields. So we got a name, price, category, all the three fields. If I'm going to introduce projection, it's going to have only the name field. This is how projection works. Now let us see about update and delete and delete many. Separate PHP file. Update demo. Till this it's common. Let me copy this portion over here. In this collection, we are going to call the update one method, which in turn is going to take uh, two arrays as a parameter. The first array is for filtering the values, and the second array is to set the values. For filtering values, Instead of a V Studio, I'm going to change the name as Visual Studio. V Studio is the name. The name is V Studio. And I'm going to set the value here using the set operator. The name is Visual Studio. So that's it. If you want to save the result, you can get the result here and then do a dump of that. On running this, we must see the record updated. It's true. View documents.
Yes, previously it was V Studio, now it became Visual Studio. That's how update one works. Let's do the update mini here. The name is going to be PHP Storm IDE. I'm going to change the name as Jet Brains PHP Storm ID. Instead of update one, it's going to be update many. That's it. Let me comment this on out. So it's true. Let's check in the database. You can see multiple documents got updated. JetBrains PHP Storm ID here too. We have uh, seen about update one and update many. Now let us uh, start with the delete one and delete many. Create a PHP file for that. Delete demo. The code is similar to update code, so I'll be copying this portion. Let me comment out this one that is update many. I want to have this update one. Now I'm going to replace update one with delete one. It just has a condition. The condition is name is Visual Studio. Let me cross check it here. We have a document with name field as Visual Studio. That's what a delete one is going to do. It's done. Let me check it again. It's gone. Now let us see about delete many. Instead of update many, it's going to be delete many. The query criteria name is PHP Storm IDE. Yeah, there is a spelling mistake. Let me correct that. It's delete many. successful I'm running this yes the records I mean the documents having name jet prints PHP storm ID is gone so this is how delete and delete many works we have seen about delete one and delete many now let us see about how to drop a collection and uh, drop a database that's very easy I'm going to use a code which we have used previously for creating a collection and a database because here I want to create a new database and a new collection. We know that that this is going to create a new database and new collection. I'm going to just change the database name as demo drop. On running this, we must see a new database there. Let me refresh this one. We got the new database with the collection products. The next step is to drop the collection. So dollar DB. The collection name is products. Yeah, products. Dollar call drop. So this will drop the collection. Let me run this one. 
refresh here the products collection is gone now to drop the database that's easy again you just need to call the drop method but on the db then refresh it's gone so this is how a drop for the collection and drop for the database works with this we have uh, seen about all in the list except a bulk write run command and grid of us let me start with bulk write new file it's very easy I'll be using the code portion from our existing examples We'll be using the bulk rate class use mongodb slash driver slash bulk write. Creating a new instance of this bulk equal to new bulk write. Now we are going to use the insert, update and a delete methods in the bulk to start with I'm going to do an insert category ID oops name it's going to be php storm id come on price 19 dollar similarly i'm going to insert Visual Studio here with the price as zero. Then an update. As you know, update has two array parameters. The first one is for filtering. So let me ch check the existing record here. NetBeans. The name is NetBeans here. Category, it's the same. I just need to do a set here. Dollar set. Update is done. So NetBeans will change into NetBeans IDE. And finally, I'm going to delete this one. That's a drone parrot. Name is 
have an email address So we have uh, four operations, two inserts, one update, and then one delete. In the next step, I'm going to use the manager execute bulk write method. The first argument is going to be the database name, followed by the collection name, its products. and then the bulk this step is not required similarly this one is not so we have a manager on that we have called the execute bulk write we have used the bulk write class which is under mongodb driver and then we have called four operations on that bulk insert and then update and finally delete on that so let me run this one Refresh products, view documents. NetBeans ID is changed, updated successfully. Visual Studio is inserted. Yes, it's done. Price is zero. PHP Storm IDE. Yes, inserted with price 19. And then Drone Parrot is gone. So this is how bulk write works. This is very very simple but very useful for batch operations. Grid of us with PHP this is an important and uh, useful topic but uh, currently there is a minor issue with the installation and configuration process for the MongoDB library. That is under Compose's MongoDB SRC directory you may not find the gridfs directory this is in most cases so you may need to pull the source from the github and then you need to manually replace this src folders content with the gridfs one for instance the issue faced it will be like this if you search for mongodb github php and then navigate to the php library page and to the APA. Under this APA, you can see we have a namespace grid of us. So there must be a corresponding directory under your composers MongoDB SRC location that is available under this C users username vendor MongoDB MongoDB SRC directory. If it is not available, you just need to download that from the GitHub source directory that is this one you just need to download the zip file and unzip the source contents under this so you'll be getting the grid source code here after this only you'll be able to work with grid and mongodb let me create a new php file for that demo grid I'm going to use the code portions from our existing samples. We got the manager. In the API, we have a class bucket under this grid of us namespace 
which has uh, key functions for uh, finding files in GridFS collection and uploading a file as well as downloading a file from GridFS collection. We are going to use that class bucket. It takes two parameters in the constructor. One is the manager, the another one is the database name. After this, we are going to use the upload from stream function, which is going to take file name as a parameter and a resource as a second parameter. So the bucket class here, new bucket. The first one is a manager, manager parameter. Second one is a database name. I'm going to use the demo PHP DB for this. That's done. Next is a file resource. Let me use a local file which I have already saved. Langs.jpg. Langs.jpg. Yes. The mode. That's done. The final step is to use the stream method upload from stream. Upload from string. The first parameter is file name. Let me uh, give a random name. Demo grid. And the resource. That's total resource. That's it. This is going to create a new collection and insert uh, this file into that. We don't need these two. Manager, yes. Let me run the code now. Done. Refresh here. Yes, we got the new collections. View documents. Demo grid is there. Click view file. A phone view. Yes. This is the file which got successfully uploaded through our code. It's uh, just a three step procedure. You need to get the manager. Then you need to create a bucket class with this manager and the database as a parameter. Then create a file resource. Pause the file resource here and close the file resource after this. This is how uh, GridFS works with PHP and always do remember to replace this SRC folder with the content from GitHub. In uh, MongoDB we have a run command method. In PHP we have execute command which we have used for our list databases sample we have seen. We have uh, seen the available databases using the execute command against the admin database. To learn more about commands, just Google for MongoDB commands. It will list you the various command options. As I mentioned earlier, this is uh, similar to the run command method which is available under MongoDB. So this example we have seen previously for listing the databases available under admin database. So let me use the same for a different purpose, I mean a different set of command. It's going to be demo command. For example, if you want to get uh, details about the database, you can always use the dbstats method and the database you need, php demo db. 
I want to get the stats of this uh, particular PHP demo DB. This command uh, DB stats, if you search in the command list, you'll be able to find that. This gives you the report storage utilization statistics. We are going to run against this PHP demo DB. This is the result of this uh, dbstats command, which is going to give you the storage size. So in future, if you want to execute a command, just refer to the MongoDB database commands document, get the uh, related command, and then use the command class and the execute method to execute against the preferred database. Node.js, MongoDB, uh, this is a natural combination. As you know that JavaScript plays a very key role in MongoDB. The following are the key ones in Node.js MongoDB learning. The first step is to install the MongoDB driver using NPM. The second and third steps, they inform about the IDE. Either you can use Cloud9 or Cloud Anywhere. These are all web-based IDEs. Or you can go for desktop-based IDEs such as WebStorm, Coding, Komodo Edit, Atom, or Sublime, or Brackets text editors. I basically prefer Code Anywhere and WebStorm IDE for my projects. So for this demo also, I'll be using the WebStorm IDE. These are the key classes. We'll be using the primary one is Mongo Client and the other ones are Collection, Cursor, Admin or the other key classes. We'll be using GridFS bucket for uh, GridFS. So these are the uh, basic points. This is our demonstration list. We'll be seeing the demonstration for a listing database, collection contents, creating new collection, inserts, finds, limits, sorts, projections, aggregations, update, drop, delete. And finally, we'll be seeing about the key one that is bulk write, run command, and grid of us. So as I mentioned earlier, I'll be using WebStorm ID for this process. And installation is very, very simple. You just need to do this one using NPM for installing the MongoDB driver. I'm in WebStorm IDE. The first step is to create a new project for our demonstration. This is going to be of Node.js, Express app type. Node.js, MongoDB. Now we got the project. The next step is to see our demonstration list. So we're going to start with listing the databases available. So let me create a new directory. Demo. Under this, I'm going to create a new JavaScript file or list db and collections. So step one is to import the required library. So for that, we are going to do this step where mongodb equal to recur. It's going to be MongoDB. That's the first step. Second step is to have the Mongo client. So, where uh, Mongo client is equal to MongoDB dot client. So that's done. Now the third step is to have the connection. We know that the URL is going to be the localhost URL to the DB. So the URL is MongoDB localhost. Default port is 27017. 
sorry, one seven. The database we are going to connect is DB demo. So this is the URL we are going to use now. Now using Mongo client, we are going to do the connection. So Mongo client dot. It's going to be the connect method. We are going to give the URL and the function. It's going to be URR and DB. Just mapping. So under this, I'm going to list the database. So prior to listing the database, I need to shift the database. That is to the admin database, which is available under db dot admin so this will get us the admin database the next one is to list all the databases available under this admin database so dot list databases it's going to be a function again it's going to give an error all the dbs so we got the databases here. The next step is to loop through that to get the database listing. So where i equal to zero, let me use a traditional for loop for i equal to zero, i less than dbs dot databases dot length i plus plus. I'm going to do a console log. Code, reformat. So what we have done is we used the driver library. Then we have created a Mongo client from that. Then we have passed the URL to the connect method. And then uh, we have connected to the admin DB. So on running this, you must get the list of available databases. In case, you, if you are getting an error over here, the module is not listed, then you need to go to this settings go for node.js npm if you search for npm or node.js it automatically it pops up here and on this to install a module just click install it may take uh, some time to build up the available packages so on that just go for mongodb the description it will be mentioned as official mongodb driver for node.js and then click install package. So our first demonstration is successful. We are able to list the databases available. Let me recollect the steps of what we did. We used the MongoDB library, then we have created Mongo client class, and on that we have called the connect method with the URL. Then this is the important step that I used admin DB. And then on that, I have called list databases, which is going to list me the databases. And I have printed the available databases here. Now to the next one in our list, that is to list collection contents. So let me create a new JavaScript file, list collection contents. 
So the steps are same. Let me copy this code. We are not going to use this one. Till this, it's a common code part. I'm not going to use the DB demo. I'm going to use a different database this time. That is demo PHP DB. Under that, we have a collection by name products. Demo PHP DB. The collection name is products. Once we got the connection, we are going to get the database DB dot. It's going to be list collections. We are going to turn that into an array of function which is going to be the function it's going to be error error and the items on looping through these items we must get the names of the collections the steps are same equal to zero by less than item stop length plus plus it's going to be console dot log we go to items array under that we are going to get the name so db collections to array and then we have did this this closes here this closes here and finally we are going to close the db We are using the list collections method. That's very easy. So these are the collections available under that, that we have already seen. One more thing is always refer the API if you are not confident about the method to call. Click on the APA. We are under DB. Here we have the method list. We have used the list collections. The samples are given here. Now to the third one in our demonstration that is to create a new collection and we'll create a new database. That's very, very easy. So for this, I'll be taking some code portions from our previous examples. So let me copy this one here, and we don't need this. Our target is to create a database under new collection under that. So let me name this one as db.node.js demo. This will be our new database. This is currently non-existent. And this will be created once this is done. Next step is to call the create collection. So to know more about this create collection method, as I said earlier, refer to the APA. So under DB, Methods are listed here. And I'll be able to see create collection under this. Yes, this is the one. It's very simple. The next step is to give the collection name. I'm going to give this as products. On running this, we must see a new DB created. 
and with the collection named products under that. Done, I hope. Yes, we got a new DB and a new collection. This is how a create collection and create DB works. It's very easy. The next one in our demonstration list is insert. So we'll see both insert single and insert many, and then we'll see about find queries. going to be insert dump for insert demo we'll be using some code blocks from our previous example and then this portion for connecting We have uh, two types of inserts, one is insert one and the second one is insert many. For insert one, it's simple. We are going to uh, just provide a single document. In our case, this one is a DB dot collection. The collection name is products. In that, uh, we are going to insert one. It's going to be the name of the product that is Amazon Echo. Come on, the price of that. It's going to be 180 and the category. The category is electronics. So once we have done this, we must be able to see that uh, this document got inserted into the products collection. So let me do a console.log insert succeeded so on running this it must uh, create this record I mean this document in our collection products so let me run this one the insert is successful as you can see we got one document in our collection so for insert many it's the same so we need an array bracket for this since we are going to have multiple documents come on third one here this one is amazon fire tv and this is paper white that's around hundred dollar this is also around hundred dollar on running this we must see multiple documents inserted into our products collection so let me do that now again to mongo booster we got multiple inserts using insert many. So this is a way to insert a single document and to insert multiple documents. Now to the next one in our demo list. That is find and find with query. This is very, very simple. Find is very, very simple. Let us use the same code block from our previous demo for insert. So instead of insert and insert many, we are just going to use the find method. So 
so find and then we are just going to do a two array so two array will give us a function under that error comma docs will be there this will be because of this find method we got and once that is done then we just need to print the docs so we do a console dot log of docs and then do a db close There's a matching for that. So it's simple. We just got a find method without any filtering parameters, and we are converting the result to an array, which is going to give us the docs. And if you want to print the error, you can easily print by using a if statement. else block we can print this portion so it's very very simple we just need to call the find method let us run and check the results so we got amazon echo amazon fire tv all those so this is how find works we got three results right so to limit that you can always use limit function you can limit by one and running this we will be getting only one result so limit is seen next is sort so let us sort by the price so under sort we are going to give the field name the field name is going to be price and the order is going to be minus one so the most priced will be listed in the top so this will give us a top two so 180 is the most price so which got listed here because we are doing a descending order so this is how sort works in case if you want to filter the results you can give the filter over here for instance in my case i'm going to filter by price which is equal to 180. let me take out this one So these are the two records with price 180. So this is how it got filtered. And in case if you need only few fields in the output, you can use the projection criteria. That's very easy. So in my case, I, I don't want the ID. So I'll be making ID as zero. And I just want the name. Name is one and prices one means the columns name and price will be included whereas id will be excluded sorry for uh, terming it as column it is field so fields will be included and this field will be excluded so let's see the result so we got it clearly here So this is how we can do projection. So we have seen about projection, sorting, limiting. So in our list we have covered limit, sorts, filters we have did and projections. So these four are covered. Find width query is also covered. Aggregation, let us see it later. 
now let us go to update one update many delete one delete many drop collection drop database these are easy ones next one is a demo update and delete I'm going to take the same sample from here. The next one in our list is bulk write. As you know that bulk write is used for batch operations. So in turn it reduces the number of round trips to the server. The bulk write API is a little bit different. So let's start with that. I'm going to create a separate uh, JavaScript file for bulk write demo. And as usual, I'm going to use some portions from our existing code. So we don't need this one. So now we got the connection to the database. Next step, as usual, we need to get the collection. We are going to use the product collection. So db dot collection. The name of the collection is products. On collection, we are going to do a bulk write. So let me call the bulk write function. The next step is bulk write. We are going to uh, do many updates and inserts in a single operation. So array is required. Then let's start with insert one. Watch this uh, API or the uh, syntax because it's a bit different and compared to the insert one. In, in insert one, in a previous case, you might have seen just we might have called the method here, whereas in this case, the API call is different. Let me save some. Qnest security camera. Price is around fifty dollars, and a category is electronics. So this is our first record. The second one is going to be a update. I'm going to update this 199 as 190. So price 199 is the one. Filter is finished. So next is the update. Come on, update. So for update, we'll have a set operator. And for that set, we are going to set the price value. Price 199, I'm going to make it as 190. Matching, matching, it's matching. So for update one, the loop is ending here. Filter. So everything is fine. Now let us collect the result function. It's a error result. So console dot log. It's going to be done and a db dot close. So we are doing only two operations here: insert one and update one. Just watch the syntax. It's a little bit complex when compared to the other ones but it will be very very useful make sure that you finish the loops properly let's run this one bulk write demo so it's done let's check the database we must see new insert yes we got the new insert and similarly this value is also got updated this is how bulk write works 
here we have used only two operations but there are many other operations as you know we have delete one delete many update one update many that can be also used here this is how bulk write works just make sure that you have a square brace here and all the brackets must be correctly finished here now let us move to the next one that is run command run command is very very simple and easy so we are going to use the file i work here first up is to use that so where fs is equal to recover fs that's done second step is where grid is equal to The other steps are uh, similar to the previous ones. So let me take some code part from here. So now to the file uploading part, I mean file saving part in GridFS. GFS is equal to grid. So in this we are going to give the database that is a DB and the MongoDB. The next step is to read the local file. From file will be using for this. This API is very simple that it will reduce the complexity. File name is langs demo. The source of the file. Let me have a separate variable here for that. So to add clarity, file source is equal to in my local machine. I have a file. In temp folder, the file name is langs.jpeg. So I'm going to give the same here. That will be src. That's it. Done. Next, we'll have a function which will have error as the first argument and the file data. Console.log. Make this file saved successfully. Followed by this, I'm going to close the database. You can add a step here if error return or something. We are here to just understand what this one does. We used grid here and paused db and mongodb as parameter. Following that, we have used the from file function where we'll be giving a file name in which it's going to be saved in the database, followed by the real file name, which is in the local machine. So let me run this one. File saved successfully. refresh here we got the new collection view documents on that we got the langs demo which we have mentioned here langs demo and on double clicking we must see the file so this is a file i have uploaded from my local machine here Similarly, you, you can do actions for reading. It's clearly given in the sample over here. So I just used this one. You can use read file, write file, to file, all those. So just try to use this NPM package, which eases your work for GridFS and Node.js. It's very, very simple.
with this we have seen about grid of us so we have covered all the topics except aggregation let us see about aggregation aggregation is very easy the next one in our list is aggregation aggregation is of three types as you know single purpose aggregation aggregation pipeline and map reduce function we'll be using a uh, single purpose aggregation and aggregation pipeline for this demo to start with i'm going to create a separate class for this one i mean separate file aggregation demo so i'll be using some code portions from our existing examples now we are connected to db node.js demo to this uh, products collection this is the data in a uh, products collection this is very simple let us do the uh, count first of the number of records in this collection so for that you just need to call the collection the name of the collection here and then the count so we are not going to filter anything we want the count of all the documents On running this we must get the total count of documents in that collection so it's 13 13 it's matching now let us see the uh, distinct values here i'm going to take a distinct on this particular name so that's very easy distinct here let me select the field name its name here so these are the distinct names available here so this is how single purpose aggregation works now let us see the aggregation pipeline that's also very easy As you know, we have match in that, we have project, and uh, we have the important one that's group. So let me use the same for this. I'm going to comment out this portion. We'll be calling the aggregate method collection the name is products dot aggregate this is the one we are going to use so to start with uh, let us use match first So in the aggregate, I'm going to use a match operator. So for match, I'm going to list the items with price greater than 100. That simple price and then we'll be using the greater than 100 that's it 
So on running this, we must see the documents with price greater than 100. Code format this. Yes. So we got the list of uh, documents with price greater than 100. So that's our match operators work. Next, I'm going to project only a uh, name and the price. So for that, I'm going to use the project operator. That's very easy. Project. Oops. Name is yes. Come on. Price is yes. Come on. The ID column we are going to ignore. So this is how project works. We got name and price. ID and category has been filtered out. The next one is the important one. We are going to use a group operator. This is a bit challenging when compared to the other ones because here every uh, field will become a variable as you might have worked with a group already. The first one is the ID column. ID, it's going to be the name field. I'm going to find the total price under each names. For instance, you can see here uh, a duplicate document is there with the same name Amazon Echo, Amazon Echo, price is 189, 189. We must get the sum of this one. So the next is sum operator. And we are going to do the sum of price. It's matching. It's matching here. Yeah. This is wrong. So let's run this one. So we got the result as expected. We got uh, two instances of Amazon Echo with price 189, 189 each. Now using sum, we have summed the total price. This is how aggregation works. Let us recollect what we have done. We have seen about single purpose aggregation initially. We used count and distinct. Later we have used the aggregation pipeline. We used aggregate. We use the match operator, project operator to filter out the fields and the group operator. So with this, we have uh, seen the complete Node.js demonstration list. We are going to see how to use Python with MongoDB. It's very simple. MongoDB team has given a clear set of examples to do the same. So on Googling for PyMongo, you'll be able to see this link, PyMongo MongoDB API. Click on that. So this is a documentation page for PyMongo. As I said earlier, clear examples are given over here by the MongoDB team. And similarly, the installation steps are all explained over here. I'm going to demonstrate how Python works with MongoDB using three simple examples. The first one is a CRUD demo. The second one is bulk operations. And the third one is the important one that is GridFS demo. So let's start with the basic one that is CRUD demo.py. I'm using the PyCharm ID over here. Let me walk through the code. The first step is to import Mongo client and version from PyMongo package. And then I have given a print for version. Then we are connecting the Mongo client to the local host. Following that, I'll be connecting to the database. 
in my case the database is inventory db and i'll be using this one products best selling so this is the collection i'll be using for demonstration the first step it's going to get the total number of documents so like we do in the command line here also we are going to do the same so db dot products best selling dot find and then a count so that is going to give you the total documents here so let me do the same over here on running this we must see the count so that's 15 here that's in the command prompt of no sql booster and the second thing is we are going to filter the query based on this particular condition where name is amazon fire sun so what i have did is db dot products best selling so this is a collection name and then i have called the find method and i am pausing the filter query as a parameter here so let's do the same in the mongo booster i mean the noisql booster So no records are there currently. So let me give a query for Amazon Fire TV here. So Fire TV. So we got it. I'll be doing the same here. Then we have a filter to list out the products with price greater than 100 so let me copy the same query over here to noisql booster and on running i must be able to see the records here so the same query is copied to the python code also that's the beauty of this and then we have update query over here Instead of Fire 7, I'm going to change this Fire TV. So to cross check it, I'm just going to copy the same code over here and execute in NoSQL Booster. On running this, yes, it has been updated. Following this, we have Insert and then finally Delete. So this is the main thing you need to remember in python using mongodb is that you can simply copy the queries from your command line directly to the python code now the only thing to note is that you may need to use the single quote or double quote for the key value so that's the only thing this code is available in the resources section please use that so it's very very simple to work with python and mongodb you can simply copy the queries from your mongodb command line directly to the python code following this we have bulk operation bulk operation is very simple i have just imported insert one from pymongo library then i have called the bulk write method over here following that individually i have called the insert one so this will be inserting records into the mongodb as a bulk operation that's the thing it's very easy to know more about bulk operation you can just search for mongodb bulk operation so this is the method that is bulk write which is used in mongodb command line in python also we do similar operation as you can see here in this example it's given very clearly we have insert one update one update many replace one delete one and delete many these all operations will be done in a single step so that's called bulk write so the same thing i have did here i just called insert one and then i'm just inserting the documents over here so the next one is grid of demo it's very 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 simple as you know that GridFS is used when you are going to store and retrieve documents 
or files which are greater than 16 MB allowed size. So if your file size is going to be greater than 16 MB, you have to use Gridfs. We are going to see how to use Gridfs in Python. It's very simple and straightforward. I have just imported Gridfs. Following this, I have called Gridfs over here. So for saving the file to MongoDB, I am using fs.put method. I have put two different files, one is a PDF and another one is an image file. And similarly to retrieve them, I have used find one method and then I have read the file content over here. So let me run this one. Yes. So two are saved and similarly this one is retrieved. Let me cross check the same. On refreshing, we must see grid of us. Yes, we got it. View. Yeah, so the files are saved here. I'm clicking this, I must be able to see the file content. So this is a file which is saved in the MongoDB server. We did that through our Python code. And this is the image file. Yes. The files are saved over here and I have retrieved the files, path out is here. So this is the file output created, it's the same, it's very simple and straightforward. You just need to import gridfs in the top. So after this call the gridfs and then call the put method to save the file and a read method to read the file. That's it. So it's very simple and straightforward. So this is how Python works with MongoDB. It's plain, simple and straightforward. For more information, visit the documentation page of PyMongo, where there is a separate examples section, which gives you a good idea about how to work with Python and MongoDB. MongoDB in less than 50 minutes. So the target of this video section is to give you a good know-how of MongoDB in less than 50 minutes. So after this video, using the accompanying documents, you will be able to work out the key sections of MongoDB in ease. We will be covering most of the commonly used key topics of MongoDB. In this video section, we are going to cover these topics. The first one is the basics, where we will be learning about the basics of MongoDB. The second one, we will be seeing about CRUD operations on MongoDB using Mongo Booster Client. We'll be seeing quite some queries in this example. Following this, we'll be learning about capped collection and TTL. These are very easy and important. Then we'll be learning about regex, full text search, and finally gridfs and aggregation. These are very easy and important. So our time starts now. So this is the PDF which is available in the resources section of this lecture. This has 11 steps. Each step has its own queries and examples. The step one is to learn why MongoDB is different and a simple overview about MongoDB. MongoDB is a NoSQL database. As you know, it's a leader. NoSQL primarily offers two features. That is the schemaless feature and the second one is horizontal scalability. So these are the two things you need to remember about a NoSQL database. So MongoDB is like a Word document which is completely structureless and you can put anything into anything. Whereas the traditional databases like Oracle, MySQL or like Excel sheet where the data will be arranged in tabular format. So this is the primary difference between MongoDB and the traditional database. There are three key things you need to remember about MongoDB that is it stores data in document format. The data will be in JSON format and finally you need to learn about the methods available in MongoDB that is very very important. So this diagram shows the important components of MongoDB. We have a MongoDB server under that you can have many databases. Under databases we have collections. Collection is a group of documents. So this is simple server. Server has databases. Database has collections and collections will have documents. I have connected to my local instance of MongoDB using a RoboMongo client and you can see how the data is organized in a collection. 
the document will be of json type and it will be saved in binary format that is called bison to know about json please open the document which is in the resources section click on the sample json structure this is a wikipedia link on clicking this it shows a simple personal details json as you can see we have key value pairs both are string then we have collection of key value pairs so this is called object then we have age as a number and then we have a array back to the document to have a very quick reference about json click on this link this gives you a clear idea about a json data type for instance we have array here we have boolean it supports null value we have number values and this is called a object in json then we have the regular string key value pairs so this example can give you a good understanding about json data types i am in the reference documentation page of mongodb as you can see the operations in mongodb are done using methods for instance this find method is for finding the documents find and modify is for finding and modify the documents so these methods you need to remember traditional databases uses sql whereas mongodb uses these methods so this is the primary thing so always remember that mongodb has methods we have seen the step 1 the step 2 is to install mongodb and its client mongo booster Mongo Booster is one of the best client of MongoDB primarily because it has two key features that is IntelliSense and it has code snippet support so you can see the code snippets as well as you will be getting IntelliSense for any kind of method so to download MongoDB just google for MongoDB downloads it takes you to the MongoDB download center click on this i'll be using the windows version click on the msi file it's a straight forward installation Once MongoDB installation is done, you need to run the mongod.exe. This is the server process under uh, this path. That is C program files MongoDB server 3.2 or 3.4 bin, and then you just need to run this mongod.exe process. You can run this by double clicking or you can run through command line. Prior to this, there is a very key step that needs to be done. That is, you need to give a data directory to MongoDB. MongoDB generally expects the data db in this path that is c data db so create this folder and then start the server process you can double click it or you can run through the command line so it's cd paste here then mongod.exe so that's it once you are able to see this particular line waiting for connections on port 27017 this is a default port for mongodb it means that your server is started successfully the next step is to install mongo booster that's very easy search for mongo booster downloads click on the link you'll be getting a fully functional version for 60 days the installation is very straightforward download and install once installed you just need to run the mongo booster process just by clicking here the connection is very easy you just need to create a connection the default values will be auto populated press test connection it will be successful once that is successful just save and connect now i have successfully connected to the mongodb server as you can see here i have many databases pre created on mongodb and they are getting listed under databases i'll be having collections so click on that it will be shown the collections so these are the collections for instance in this collection i have around 24 documents so this gives me the documents the data is presented in tabular format but the true format is on json format So this is the format in which the data will be presented to you but Mongo Booster is giving you options to view the data either in tree format or in tabular format or in the true json format 
now we are in step 3 step 3 is to create database create collection just remember the architecture server has databases and database has collections let me create the database first right click create database the database name is demo so database is successfully created without collections now to create collection right click create collection so let me give the name here I think it is user profile yes so user profile okay collection is successfully created but without documents open shell let me create collection through command line now paste it the code let me make it as a user profile X yes. on executing this you can see the collection is created through command line also refresh so we got two collections user profile which is created through wizard the second one is user profile X I'm going to drop this one drop collection on running this the collection got dropped you can see true printed here the next step is to insert documents into this collection for this we'll be moving to step 4 the two key things to note are document with different structures in same collection every document will have a default underscore ID so let's see the first one for instance here we'll be having two user profiles one with ID name age income sex nationality language additional info etc the second user profile will be different where we'll be having user ID logged in lost login location type etc so different structures this is a sample data which we are going to insert this is the first one and this is the second one so two different types of documents are going to be there in the collection so that's important Step 5 is to do a basic CRUD operation in MongoDB, insertion and multiple insert in single query. Sample data. So we are going to insert the first sample data. Let me select from the JS file which I have. Now I have to paste this on the window. Right click here, view. So it's an empty collection as we know that. And I am going to paste here. paste it as you can see here we are going to insert in user profile the query is very clear if you keep the cursor over there you'll be able to see the method syntax everything now let me show you the code snippet user profile dot insert as you can see here you can see the code snippet as well as the method definition the code snippet is easy you can easily understand from it and the method definition is below that so that's the coolest feature of Mongo Booster. Now I'm going to run this one on running. We must see two documents created. Yes, two got created. Right click view. So these are the two documents created. In JSON view. back to table view now I'm going to insert the sample data too so let me copy from the JS file copy it I pasted it and I'm going to execute this one. I'm running this. New documents are created. So totally we have five documents. Right click. View documents. So we have five documents. As you can see here, the documents have completely different structure. That's the beauty of MongoDB. We can have different structure documents in the same collection. So this is what is the first point we mentioned documents with different structures in the same collection.
the second one is every document will have a default field id so this field underscore id is created by default it is auto generated it is unique there is a bug with uh, mongo booster that this id column which i haven't mentioned got is shown there but if you check with robo mongo software there is no id column so it's a bug with mongo booster so ignore that so just focus on this one this id column underscore id column is auto generated so it's auto generated unique it is indexed and can be replaced so now to the step 5b that is crud operation in mongodb finding documents I have the code here let me copy paste to mongo booster right click view documents i'm going to paste it in a new window so paste it the first one is a find method so under collection methods documentation you'll be able to see the find method db.collection.find and we have the query and the projection as a parameter to the find method so let's do that field value so i'm just giving a empty find so it will it is going to list all the elements so we got it the next one is nationality we are going to select as australia let me execute this one so we must see the record only with australia yes the single record with the nationality is australia is listed here the next one we are going to use the age field for instance here age is greater than 30 to know about uh, these operators please visit query and projection operator section in the documentation click query selectors you'll be able to see the operators equal to greater than greater than equal to less than less than equal to not equal to and all so we are going to use greater than operator here and in the next one we'll be using less than operator let me run this one so we got age greater than 30 listed here the next one is to find documents with age less than 30 so we got a single document with age less than 30 here it is 26 the next one is the and operator if we have two conditions the primary king to note is the square brace so we'll be having multiple conditions within the square brace the condition number one is the age has to be less than 35 and the condition number two is age has to be greater than 20. To know more about AND and OR operator, visit the query and projection operator sections in the documentation. Under this, we have logical operator. Yes, we have here. You can get the details of AND, OR and other logical operators here. Now back to our code. On running this, we must see documents with age between 20 to 35. Yes, we have two documents with age between 20 to 35. Next. It's the same for our operator, which is going to give us a lot of documents with, because the conditions are same. It is similar to AND operator, but in the opposite way. On executing this, so these are the documents with OR condition satisfied here. The next in our list is count limit the number of documents, which is going to limit skip the number of documents and sort we have one for ascending and minus one for descending so we are going to see this the first one is count on running this it's going to give the count of documents yes we got six the next one we are going to limit the number of documents to two so we must get only two documents yes we got only two following this we have skip operator which is going to skip the top two so we'll get four the other two documents are skipped the next one is sort method we are going to use the id field which is going to do a minus one that is descending order of this id field let me execute this one run yes we got the id field in the descending order four three two one so if you want to see the definition of sort you just keep the cursor over there you'll be able to see the description of it we have seen finding documents 
The next is 5C that is update and deleting documents. So we are going to use the update method. We are going to update the location US to location as the United States of America. To Mongo Booster, right click, update documents. So we got the query here, update. You can see the update syntax here. Then we have a set operator. Then we have option fields multi. Multi means it will update multiple documents. Currently it is false. These are all option fields. The next we have absurd. Absurd means it will find for the document. If it is not there, it is going to insert. It is also set to false. So this is optional. We can totally take it off. So let me take the query from the JS file. I have copied it. I'm going to paste here. Yes, done. On executing this, we must see a single document updated with location US to USA. Done. So one matched, one document got updated. Let me view the documents to see the changes. View. Yes, as you can see here, one document has got updated. That is because we have set multi as false. The default is multi false. It's not like our traditional databases. So if you give multi as true, the option as true, it is going to update multiple documents. So let me execute this. On running this, the documents got updated. Let us view the documents. Right click, view documents. As you can see here, the documents have updated. The next one in our list is to do a remove. Let me copy this code here to Mongo Booster. On executing this, the first two documents with user ID 01001002 will get deleted. So removed successfully. Right click view documents. So, so the documents are gone. So this is how remove works. It's very simple. You just need to call the remove method. So we have finished updating and deleting documents. So they are, we have finished the basics, we have finished the simple CRUD operation. The next is capital collection. Capital collection is very easy. The only main difference between capital collection and the other collections are we have a size limitation in capital collection. For instance, we will be setting the maximum size as 10 here. So it can hold only 10 documents at a time. So all other documents will be ejected out. So let me copy this query. Paste it here, done. Camp is true, size is limited, 50 KB. On executing this, we must see a new collection by name, log capped. Let me do a refresh. Refresh, so we got the log capped collection without any records. Now I'm going to insert the test data into that now i am going to insert the demo data into log capped collection let me copy from the js file now i am going to insert log data into this as you can see here we have log 1 log 2 log 3 log 12 so this is the demo data we are going to use but the max is 10 so Two of this will get ejected. I mean the log one and log two will get ejected. So we must have only the data from log three till log 12. Run, success. Let me do a refresh first. Yeah, we got only 10 records as you can see here. That's because we have capped the collection to 10. Let me view it, yeah. So as I said, mentioned earlier, we have only 10 records that's starting from three. We are going to see about indexing. Indexing is one of the primary part of database management because it fosters your search query. In MongoDB by default, it creates an index on every document on the ID field. So in this demo section, we are going to learn how search works before and after indexing. So for that, we'll be using explain method. So this is the field I have been mentioning. Default index is created in the ID field.
let me copy the query as you can see I am searching for uh, income with around 6 million on executing this we will be able to see the result in JSON format where we will be getting the total number of documents examined that's here currently we have four documents and all the four documents are examined to find a document with this income matching so let us create an index on the income field and see how the search works out so we are going to create a index on the income field the syntax is very easy that's create index method is called with a field on running this yes the index has been successfully created number of indexes after is 2 and before is 1 and you can use view indexes to see the indexes in the collection get indexes now you can see here we have two indexes so now let us see the execution statistics on clicking run we must see the documents examined must be less So total dogs examined is just one previously it was four so that is the power of index to drop index it is very easy you just need to call the drop index method on the particular field that will drop the index now to the step eight that is a ttl collection ttl collection stands for time to leave collection where the data will be kept only for the specified seconds note that it is seconds not milliseconds so the documents will be automatically deleted after a particular specified second. So in our case, demo TTL is a collection name. To create a TTL index, it is very easy. You just need to create an index specifying that it will expire after a particular second. So log data is a field, demo TTL is a collection name. So create collection is demo TTL. Now it's created successfully. Right click indexes add index so add field so field name is log underscore data okay expire after just see the field we have expire after I'm specifying I'm going to preview it on clicking preview you'll be able to see the query here so it has created a so create index on this field which is going to expire after second stamp so it is similar to our query on running this we must see oh, expire seconds I have to select completely on running this we must see the index is created successfully so the number of indexes after is 2 and before is 1 now right click indexes view indexes so as you can see here we have two indexes now the expire after seconds is 10 for a particular index the next step is to insert the test data now we don't have any data here as you can see here I'm going to just insert date on the log field let me copy this so log data will have only date I'm going to run this multiple times one two three four so four times it got executed you must see four documents here view so we got four documents inserted at different times as you can see here I'll keep on executing this so after 10 seconds the data must go off yes now there are no records in the collection so this is how TTL index works so just remember the syntax now to the next step that is step 9 text search full text search full text search is very important in mongodb because it is schemaless it's very easy to do a full text search you just need to create a text index on a field as you can see in the documentation here so this is a documentation page for text search mongodb supports query operations that perform text search on string content mongodb uses text index and the text operator so this is important so we have to create a text index and we have to use a text operator so this is the syntax for the text operator which will be performing the search we'll be giving the search string first then we'll be specifying the language 
then we'll be specifying whether it's case sensitive or not and finally we'll be specifying whether it is diacritic sensitive or not so this is the syntax for text operator prior to that do remember that we need to create the text index so let me do the first step that is to create a text index let me copy from the js file copied it so demos text search is the collection name copied it pasted it here so we don't have an index so let me create a collection for this so demo text search so the collection is created now i'm going to create an index on the message field so indexes before and after is two and one indexes i'm going to view indexes as you can see we have two indexes one is of type text now i'm going to insert text data value into full text search so let me copy it from the js file paste it on mongo booster and then run it so now we must see around 11 records here let me do a refresh we have 11 records i mean 11 documents if you see the document it's very easy it has messages good coffee with cures fatty liver good coffee best among all so it's a simple document search in full text the first one is to search for message with good easy so it will be search both with good and easy let me paste it on running this query we must get messages with both good and easy but currently we won't find because it's not a text search it's a plain find query so it won't find anything so let us give it same thing with text search now pasted it as you can see i have used the text operator previously i haven't used it and then i have given the search operator on running this we must see the documents with both good and easy let me expand this one so easy so we have documents matching easy and good now i'm going to ignore fatty on executing this we must get results without fatty yes so the document with fatty text is not selected so let me show it again in our previous execution we got the document with fatty liver is mentioned but currently since we are ignoring it the particular document with fatty text is ignored next one i am going to search a complete text is also here on executing this we must get a exact document so which has the exact text now the interesting one that is i'm going to search for goodness it will be listing the documents with good also that's the power of text search selected run so you can see documents with good text also so that is the intelligence of full text search now to the next one where we are going to search for easiness so it will list the document with words easy also let me run this one as you can see mongodb queries are easy so this document got listed after we searched for easiness similarly we can search for happy we'll get documents with happy as well as happiness as you can see in the result we have document with happy as well as happiness now i'm going to search the word the ec the word the will be ignored let me search it as you can see there are no the in the document and it is ignored 
so the common words will be ignored the next one is very interesting and important please note that every document search will have a text score you can also manually rate a document or by default it will be given a text score remember that every document has a text score so now we are going to see what the text score for every document i am going to search for coffee so as you can see here the search results have score mentioned over here so every document is having a text score and note that the text score is based on its own algorithm for example if you take the first document we have coffee repeated many times so its text score is higher for this particular keyword coffee so it's easily understandable this is how text search works so three things to remember for text search you must create a text index number two you need to use text operator and search operator and number three is every document will be given a text score by default you can also edit the text score manually now let us move to the next topic we are going to see about regex regex is very important because we have different formats of data and regex eases our work this is the documentation page for regex and we'll be using the regex operator the good thing about regex is that it is perl compatible pcre or perl compatible regex are very famous the syntax to use regex operator is shown below as you can see here in the leftmost we have a field name then we have a regex operator followed by pattern and then we have options operator with different options this is a sample data we are going to use for our demo session it is very simple and it has only name field now let me copy the data to mongo booster paste it on executing we must get around 13 records refresh yes we have the persons collection with 13 documents so we have rick david elizabeth david david is in upper case and david warner david john david 1 paula david davidson david king first david fifth david siju david and then the names arun karun ahmed without david in them now let us start with the regex queries so now uh, let us start with the first one in regex queries let me copy this to the mongo booster on executing this we must see names with both david and arun in them so we have rick david davidson david all those and then for arun we have arun and karun karun is included because arun is there now to the next one regex search with all david in caps and with options as i if you see the documentation i is for case insensitivity so we have case insensitive search here so let me copy this one and execute here and on executing we must see david names with david in both small as well as in capital letters so that's done the next pattern is similar to that of the first one which has the same function as that of the first query what we executed and similarly the next one is for ignoring the case let me execute this the result will be similar to the first one so we got the similar result to that of first one and for case ignore search so we have both cases listed here now this is a simple query where we are just going to search for david in caps so let me execute this on executing this we must see only two documents with david in caps 
now this is interesting we'll be searching for starting with so here we are going to search for starts with one so we must get first David yes we got the same result as we expected result is first David the next one is we are going to search for the term sen star so we'll be getting Davidson here and case is ignored as you can see here we have Davidson David King this record will be listed in the result running this yes as we expected we got Davidson David King so that's because of this pattern to the next one where the name is going to end with run we'll be using the dollar symbol in that selection and then on executing we must see Arun and Karun yes as we expected we got two records with ending with run dollar next is we are going to search names with the digits in them let me select this on execution we must see three documents yes John David 1 where we have number first David and then fifth David so this is how regex works with this we have seen about the basics of regex operations in mongodb you need to refer to the Perl regex manual and mongodb regex manual GridFS is very very important as you know that it allows us to save as documents with sizes more than 16 MB which is the Bison limit. This is the GridFS documentation page. GridFS is a specification for storing and retrieving files that exit the Bison document size limit of 16 MB. So this is the definition for GridFS. Instead of storing a file in a single document GridFS divides into parts and chunks and stores each chunk as a separate document. GridFS uses two collections to store files. One collection stores in file chunks and others in file metadata. So this picture can give you a good idea about GridFS. As I said earlier, always remember that there is a 16 MB file limit for the Bison file. So using MongoDB, we'll be using MongoFiles command. We'll be creating a bucket which will have two collections for FS chunks which will save file chunks and a FS files collection which saves the metadata about the file chunks created above. So this is very easy. Let us see a simple demo. We'll be using a simple demo using Mongo Booster. We'll be using GridFS bucket and it will create two collections, FS chunks and FS files. So first step is to right click here, create GridFS bucket. On clicking this demo underscore grid fs so the name of the bucket is demo underscore grid fs bucket and on clicking ok we must see a new bucket here with the symbol of save icon the next step is to add files to that right click add files so this is the image file i have selected there are two options with full path without full path i'll be selecting without full path on clicking this the file will get uploaded and the file got saved in the bucket and on right clicking on clicking view documents we must see file chunks around six we have to view the image double click here it shows the image uploaded Note that this is in Mongo Booster, not in Image Viewer. Now we have seen a simple demo about GridFS. Now let us move to the next topic that is aggregation. This is one of the important topic in MongoDB, but it is very easy to understand. In aggregation, we have three types of aggregation. Aggregation pipeline. This is a widely used, commonly used one. The next one is MapReduce. Aggregation pipeline replaces MapReduce and then we have single purpose aggregation operations under single purpose aggregation operations we have count distinct and group methods count is for counting distinct is for getting distinct records group is not suggested to use so let us see more about aggregation pipeline 
For aggregation pipeline, we have stages, expressions and accumulators. As you can understand from the name itself, stages process the data in stages. So match operator and group operator are used. Whereas for expressions, we have string arithmetic expressions and for accumulators, we have some average. To easily understand about MongoDB aggregation, Google for MongoDB aggregation, click on the link aggregation under MongoDB manual, click aggregation pipeline. A very good diagram explaining aggregation is provided. As you can see here, we have different order details. So we have aggregate method and we have two stages here that is a match stage and the group stage. We have different order details here, each one having a custom ID, a match operator is applied and customers with status A are matched here. All are having status A. The last one is having status G that is ignored. Then a group operator is applied here. The group operator groups the records with similar customer ID and it shows the total of the orders in status A. This clearly explains how aggregate works. So let us start with the user profile count. We are going to do a count in the user profile collection. So we have four records here, view documents. Now we have four. Count has to give us a give us four. We got four. Now db dot user profile dot distinct. Distinct. I'm going to take off this slice. It's not required. Distinct on a particular field name. Let me do a find to see the field name. We're going to do a distinct in the age field. So here it's age. On running this, we must see the distinct age values. So this gives us a distinct age values. So we have 35, 26, 30. So those are distinct. Now to the third query where we are going to use the aggregate method. We are going to match based on the income greater than 4 million. Record from here. Let me copy the query from here. Paste it on. On running this, we must see records with income greater than 400,000. So we got 5 and 7. So both have greater than $4 million income. Now to the next one where we are going to use group operator. We are going to count the total users using the sum. On running this, so we must get 4, we got 4 because our greater than value is 40,000 only. So we got 4 total users. Now to the next one, where we are going to do a sum based on the income. So income field is used. This will give the sum of persons whose income is greater than 4 million dollars. So we got 13 million dollar match first as you can see we have 5 million and 7 million so the result is 13 million the sum operator is used on the income field so dollar income is a field so that is a key point to note we have used greater than so we got 13 million now let me use less than here On running this, the result is 680,000. Let me do a match on this to demonstrate. So we have two incomes, 290 plus 390. So it adds up to 680. Do always remember to see and understand the diagram in the documentation. It gives you a clear idea about how aggregation works. So we have covered all the basic topics. The basics is done, the simple CRUD operations is done, capital collection we have seen, TTL we have seen, regex, full text search, 